Okay, is this? Ah, here we go. Okay, so I am here with Ariana Melendez. Yes, sir. Is that right? Yeah, you got it right. Yeah. <laughs> I just butcher people's names sometimes. And it's yeah, just like... People get it wrong a lot. It's no problem. <laughs> so Ariana is, um, yeah, going to be kicking it on the upcoming Invicta card on Friday. Right, Invictors return. They're going to Access TV, which mm -hmm. it's kind of irritating. Ain't gonna lie, because I was watching Invictor on Fight Pass, and uh -huh. it was gravy. I have no clue how I will be watching Invictor. I know this first event is going out on a social, so that's mm -hmm. great. So I'm gonna get to watch this one. Hopefully, that's what's gonna happen going forward. I don't know. All right. Yeah, I'm not too sure about uh, the future ones, but I know for sure for the prelims um, and even the main event, you'll be able to catch it on YouTube and some of their other social media. So that's really cool. I mean, it helps mm. my family to be able to go ahead and watch it, you know, while they're busy working and stuff like that. So <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> right. So um, you were originally going to open up the main card. But yeah. that will change. <laughs> yes, yes, it actually changed in like a blink of a second, I think. Um, I was opening it and then I got a notification of the fight lineup and they had added another uh, flyweight card, I believe. So a fly flyweight fight. So yeah, um, it, it's fine. I don't mind being second, you know, <laughs> last until the main card. It's no problem. <laughs> uh, so when did you find out that you were jumping on this card? Um, so I got a call from my management team, uh, maybe like a month uh, before this fight. Um, and I guess uh, one of Fatima Klein's uh, opponents uh, pulled out or something happened where they needed a replacement. They needed one fast. And, uh, you know, I'm with Showtime Management and they, uh, they set it up. They were like, hey, this is your opponent. Talked it over with my coaches, got the okay. I was like, sign me up. This is like a once in a lifetime opportunity. Like, uh, this is like everything I've been working hard for. I'm not going to turn it down and I'm going to work to, to get this win. So it was, and put on a show. So it was, it was great. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. I mean, second pro fight and you get to jump on that Invicta card. That is crazy. I mean, that, that is like, you've seen so many people get that opportunity and then just rock it. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I must be doing something right, I think. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, what are you doing? Right. So you, you, you know, you haven't got a, a fight. You're waiting maybe to see what comes and this, ha this fight comes. But what are you doing before that call? How are you keeping, are you hitting the gym like every day? Like what's the whole, because, you know, you hear when fighters hit fight camp right? That they go through a certain process. But mm -hmm. for someone who's so early in their career, is it like fight camp every day, essentially? Um, a little bit. I mean, I had set a goal as soon as I turned pro that I wanted four fights this year. Um, so within, you know, those four fights, of course, I have to stay active because you need a little bit of space in between to, mm -hmm. you know, keep training, work on that cardio, work on the, you know, the mistakes you possibly made on the last fight. So um, even after the Watson fight, um, I was back in the gym the very next week sparring and, you know, correcting the little things that I had done there and, uh, you know, uh, stayed uh, active as far as cardio goes, running and, and getting that, you know, as much as I hate the road work, I have to do it. So I definitely kept running the three miles a day that was suggested by a teammate of mine to keep my cardio up and, uh, and yeah, so just, you know, pretty much staying active. I hit the gym about four times out of the week when I'm not in camp. And then when I'm in camp, I'm in there about six days out of the week. So uh, there's only about a couple day difference, but I try to stay in there as much as I can because when I'm in there, I'm just so motivated and just ready to work no matter what. So it's, it's nice. Yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. Like, so made your debut right? And you get a submission, first round submission, about just over halfway through the fight, which is, that must have been like, what, what is your thought going into that fight? 
Oh, I was very nervous for that fight. You know, Glory Watson, um, I believe, was like like the top five ranked in our, the her state, and she's mm. like known to be a very aggressive uh, striker. And um, I've gone against a couple of strikers and stuff like that. So I mean, it was just mainly just getting over the fact that she was six and one that her record was like phenomenal, you know, and, you know, I didn't have the best start to my amateur career. So, you know, just having that number in front of me, I'm like, Oh, wow. Okay. So she's got talent behind her. I'm going to work hard. You know, I'm going to study this fight that I see on her and I'm going to, you know, see what I can do to, you know, have a really good camp to, to make this a win. And I had a phenomenal camp, you know, I had some of the great best teammates I could get, you know, and, and, you know, just worked really hard and, it, I'm just so glad it, it showed in that debut. It was um, it was fun. It was really fun to be able to get a guillotine choke. Um, you know, in the first round is definitely something I'm really happy about. I oh, mean, you should definitely be about that. <laughs> but what was the fault though? Because hey, it seems crazy, right? Someone making their debut going up against someone six and one. You just be like, ah, oh, that seems crazy matchmaking. But if that didn't happen, you wouldn't get that win and you wouldn't be fighting on Invictus. So it's like, you know, you were, it was the right fight because you won that fight. But looking yeah. at that fight on paper, you think, oosh, that's crazy. Yeah. yeah, well, we were both debuting. Her amateur career was six and one. So it was, um, it was just, you know, just, you know, someone's oh has to go type thing you know like we have to we have to even it out and you know i'm just glad that i i was able to come out with the one and oh on that fight okay that's cool but yeah you did mention right that you, your amateur career started off a bit rocky right so two losses mm -hmm. what kept you going oh man <laughs> would have just been like Looks like fighting ain't for me, right? You you lose one and you're like, okay. I mean, that, I you know, I wasn't prepared. Like that happened and that happened and that's the only reason. You can make like rationales in your mind, but then you lose the next one. Mm -hmm. And does doubt start to hit you and think, am I actually as good as I think I am? Like, am I ready for this? What, what went wrong? Like, what am I doing? Like, what was, what were you thinking? Yeah, I actually got a story that I've never told anyone, so uh, it's, it's new. Okay. Uh, so after the Connecticut fight, you know, I was like, maybe like two weeks before that, um, I was battling with pneumonia. So oh. I was like, I had to take a, like five days off from training and stuff like that. And I was just completely drained. But I wanted to fight. I wanted to, you know, make make an impact in Connecticut. Like you're getting flown out to Connecticut to fight at the Mohegan. You know, yeah, like yeah, that's yeah. not an opportunity you pass up. So <laughs> I did the best that I could to um, to rehabilitate. I was doing like lung breathing exercises so I could breathe better. Like I was just doing everything possible to speed up, you know, getting better. Um, so we finally, uh, we fought, you know, I, towards the second round, I was already just really tired and I knew that I had better cardio than that way better cardio but yeah. unfortunately with you know that incident playing into it it wasn't you know it didn't play into it but um after the fight you know I went into the back locker room and I was really upset I had two coaches with me that that trip I had uh, Kenny Augusto and um, my striking coach Alec Brooks and um, you know I just looked at them and I was like I don't know guys like I don't know like and they, they shut it down right away. They were just like, stop. <laughs> they were like, stop right there. They're like, you have this. They were like, look how far you already made it and all the impact that you've made. Like you, you made it here. Like you can keep going. They were like, like, they were just telling me like, do not quit. Like just keep going. And we promise it's going to pay out. And I was like, <sighs> they're like, just, just do it. Just do one more fight at least and, and see how you feel. So I was like, all right. I'll give you guys that. So, you know, we got to go to Boston the very next day, do a whole trip. And then we flew out that same day and then we came back home. And, you know, I kind of made a promise to myself that I was like, no matter what I do, I am not going to lose again. I'm going to do everything I can in every single camp to outwork anybody I have to and, and just be the best that I can be. And like, if I'm not leaving the gym tired, 
I, I didn't succeed that day. <laughs> so um, I, it just changed my whole mentality um, as far as that goes. And then right after that fight, I took a kickboxing fight and that started my, my win streak. And, you know, I'm on a five fight win streak now since, you know, counting the, uh, counting the uh, kickboxing fight. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's, it's awesome. You know, I just, between the team that I had behind me and the mindset that I put myself in, um, I made it here. So it, it's great. <laughs> I mean, I, I think that says a lot, right? Because so many people would have just, after the second loss, just been like, this ain't for me, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I, there's other things I can do where I'm not getting punched in the face. So right. I might as well do those. You know what right. I mean? All this job doesn't seem as bad. Right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. There was just... um. Just when you have the perfect uh, equation of a teammate and teammates and um, and just being a go getter and just not giving up and really truly believing in yourself, um, you know I'm living proof that you can make anything happen. I mean, I'm on my second pro fight and I'm an Invicta now, so it's it's crazy. Yeah, <laughs> that is, yes, yeah, awesome. Man. It's awesome, and I think, you know. You, you see a lot of people like looking up to, you know, UFC, Bellator, those kind of guys. But I think it's also people like you just new in your career and have come across that adversary, but just, you know, got past it. Right. Because people think, oh, like you should be unbeaten, you know, Khabib, he, you know, didn't lose. Incredible. But I think the big thing that we've seen in MMA, right? You have people like Anthony Smith, who rocky, rocky mm -hmm. periods. Yeah. Then he goes, he moves up a division and goes on a tear. Yeah. The former champions fights for the belt. It doesn't go his way, but he still got himself in that position. And that's, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a loss, right? It's, you know, because, you know, you're using knees, <laughs> legs, arms, you know, he does everything. So, like, you can get cool, right? It, happen it can happen to anyone, but it doesn't mean that you're bad. It doesn't mean you're rubbish. Right. right. So you just have to keep that belief and go, and that's what you did. And, yeah, look at you now, right? It's, in yeah. it's incredible, right? It's a, it's a great feeling for sure, you know, and one of the, you know, now that you mentioned fighters, one of the biggest fighters that I do look up to, uh, on, even though he did lose, you know, the title fight is Michael Chandler, you know, I followed him when he was in Bellator, mm. you know, and um, I just really like his mindset and his, and his work ethic and, you know, it, it definitely uh, shows in his fights and stuff like that, even when they don't go his way, he came back in his press conference, he's like, I will be a world champion one day wasn't today but it will be and, and you know stuff like that to have that type of inspiration is is phenomenal it's great yeah well I mean he's done it in Invicta right we've seen he's done it he's come back you know lost to Will Brooks twice right could have lost heart but then went on a winning streak again so it's yeah. just like yeah it can happen put himself in the position to you know get to that title fight in the UFC which he was seconds away from winning. Yeah. Right? There are so many referees that would have stopped that fight in the first yeah. round. Yeah. It is so crazy how that fight went. You know what I mean? Yeah. Is it, but that's, that's the sport, right? That, that's yep. how it goes. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's like even, you know, looking at referees, right? In the Mazzano fight, she gets stood up mm -hmm. and it just... Sorry about this. One second. Yes, <laughs> hey. We made it. Um, yeah, I can't remember what we were just talking about. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, just how Fun. things change. You know, referee can stand you up. You know what I mean? So many different things can happen in a fight. Mm -hmm. But how do you prepare yourself for those? different scenarios um it just all goes into the the fight camp I mean I work with you know some really great coaches and even teammates that literally put me in every single 
different type of situation I could possibly end up in. Uh, you know, so if we need to work on throwing a bunch of strikes to finish the fight and not get tired, we do that. If we need to practice more groundwork and not get stuck in dangerous situations, we work on that, you know. It's um, it's really important to me to be an all-around fighter for any type of fight that I get into. So, you know, for the team that I have, you know, they, they help me with that. They help me get prepared for moments like that. To where if, you know, they're able to survive that round, if I was about to get a TKO that, you know, I'm able to recuperate and, and, you know, get ready for that next round and not be drained. You know, if, if I'm, you know, if I'm, you know, on top and, you know, they're about to go for something, I have teammates to help me get ready for that. So it's, it's all about the camp, to be honest, and the different type of fighter that I'm fighting or an opponent. We all, we all make adjustments to go ahead and make sure that we secure the win. Mm. So when you're doing your jujitsu, you're starting off with someone on your back or on top of you, all of that stuff. Yeah, well, definitely. Um, I, that's something that I've been working on a lot, especially with this camp is just um, already getting myself in dangerous situations and one, not panic <laughs> and yeah. two, you know, try to be smart and figure things out step by step. And, you know, it's it's so nice to have it just that you know we practice it in training where my coach will be right there and be like okay Ari so do this okay now go here all right now do your best to get out of this so it's um it's really beneficial uh for sure to just put yourself in those positions in training so if you do get into them while you're fighting you don't panic and you know exactly what to do or you know you have your coach there to kind of help guide you and you know help you listen and you know help you you know get out of that situation mm, yeah yeah, yeah. Because, yeah, I think that's, it, it's an interesting thing because you hear a lot of people be, yeah, no, I, my jiu-jitsu is great. And then when you see them on bottom in a compromising situation, they don't know how to get out of it. And you just think, what do you, how are you training? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. are you putting yourself in those compromising positions? So it's, yeah, definitely good to hear that Hey, that's what you're doing. Right? Yeah, no, I definitely don't get spoiled in camp. I get, <laughs> I get, I get handed to me more times than I win, and that's what makes me the fighter that I am today. So it's, it's great. I mean, I train with some amazing wrestlers, um, Luke Paste, Kenny Augusto, and I've got some of the best striking coaches I can get. You know, Coach Alec has really developed a whole system around you know my fighting style and stuff. Mm. So uh, we're prepared for anything, anywhere the fight goes, we're prepared for. So out of everything, what would you say is your, maybe your speciality, the thing that you enjoy the most, striking, jujitsu, wrestling? Oh, that's so hard because I've gotten a TKO before and I've gotten submissions before. Um, I would say I do enjoy the striking part a little bit more um, just because you're able to like pick apart your opponent a little bit better than you are on the ground. Um, so mm -hmm. you're like able to see more of like how they're reacting and stuff like that. Um, so probably maybe striking. Okay. Okay. But you're ready to take it wherever it's going to go, right? Oh, absolutely. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> we train for everything. <laughs> That's good to hear. Now, one thing I always wonder about weight cutting right how is that for you um let's see this is probably like the eighth time or ninth time I've had to uh, cut down to 115 I I would like to say I have it down pack now um so uh it's actually fairly easy for me um uh, you know I woke up pretty light today so you know I'm able to enjoy a little bit more and you know uh, we have a full system that we follow mm -hmm. to, to cut weight. So it's uh, very beneficial to be following that system now that I have that to kind of go off of. And it works like a charm every time. <laughs> and if I ever have any questions about anything, I'm, my coaches are always there for me to go ahead and answer them whenever I need them or to be like, oh, maybe you should eat more. Maybe you should you know, cut back on this a little bit more. And, and we make 115 just fine. Ah, that's great. Because I think it's one thing that we see a bit more of, but missing weight, right? There's been a few Invicta cards where the few athletes have missed weight. And I think women have got the, you know, menstruation issue that comes in, which makes it harder, right? So how do you kind of factor that into mm -hmm. the weight cut? 
Um, I mean, that's definitely something that you have to plan for. You know, if you if you feel like that's going to happen, then you have to eat a little bit less or you have to compensate for having that that extra water weight. You know, I can probably say I've never missed weight, knock on wood, even when I was an amateur. You know, I've had I believe three opponents miss weight on me in my amateur career. So whereas, you know, now so far I haven't. Um, especially now that I'm getting paid, I will not miss weight. <laughs> but uh, it's um, it's it's a it's a system that you have to follow, and you know, just like everything else, you need to go off of what your body you know feels. So if you think that's gonna happen, you have to prepare for it, and you have to cut back on one thing. It might suck, but I mean, at least you know you're gonna be walking on that scale, making the weight that you need to make. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. And now you're in the pros right? Is there a weight your competitor might come in at where you're like, we're not taking that fight? Oh man, she's not coming in pretty heavy. I worked really hard for this fight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I would say, you know, honestly, I would talk to my coaches about it and see how they would feel. But I mean, if she came in like 10 pounds heavier at like 125 and didn't cut anything, then I'd be like, okay, like, come on, like, mm. that's a little ridiculous. But um, I would say above that, no, I would still take the fight. I've had a, an opponent in uh, my amateur career come in pretty heavy. I want to say like maybe like six, seven pounds. And that doesn't seem like a lot, but like when you're cutting the weight and then you rehydrate and everything, you got to think about how much they're walking around at and oh, how much yeah. they rehydrate and how heavy they're going to be than you when you, when you made the weight and then they're, you know, six, seven pounds off. So um, I've had that happen and you know it, I still took the fight because, and I won so you know the weight thing it really doesn't you know matter too much but I mean I would say maybe like 125 I'd be like okay like that was that's not right. <laughs> I, I'd say that's fair yeah. you know, it's definitely a fair thing <laughs> but I definitely always want to fight so I mean you have to really try to miss the, the weight ah <laughs> uh, man so in between you know you're fighting is there like aspirations to do grappling competitions things like that or is it strictly MMA right now oh it would just be MMA I don't want to like risk any type of unnecessary injuries for a grappling tournament or anything like that and I really do want to fight four times this year so I don't want to put my body in any type of um, situation to where uh, that would be compromised if I got a phone call maybe like a month after this fight um, so, you know, I, de I definitely don't look to do that. I mean, I've got some really good grapplers and stuff like that in the gym as it is. Um, I don't really feel the need to like, venture out and get any other work. I mean, I trained, like I said, with some really good guys and even girls, you know, that, that really just, you know, hand it to me and they, they make me work. They make me think so. And they're not trying to kill me either. If I go to a tournament, you know, that they just see red and they want to snap my arm. I don't really want to deal with that right now. So, um, so yeah, it, it's nice to train at a hard pace in grappling, and but in a matter where I know my teammate cares about if anything happens, if we got caught up in a weird position that they we would stop and reset. Um, so, yeah, I don't think I would want to do a grappling tournament or anything like like outside of MMA, just because, um, just because I get, in, like I said, enough work at the jungle as it is, it's, it's good enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> and with these four fights this year, right, what, do you have a goal of when you might be in a certain promotion? Is there an idea of, if we do this, this is possible? right? This could get us a call to the contender series, or this could get us to LFA, or this could, like, is there that kind of thought process in, you know, planning for these fights? That's actually crazy that you mentioned that, because um, I was actually telling my coach, Coach Alec, um, my goal is to probably, you know, by January or February, be fighting for the strawweight title for Invicta. So, you know, I want to be able to make such an impact that I can maybe make that happen and uh, get that opportunity. I know there's a ladder that needs to be climbed and I have no problem doing that. So, um, so I'm excited to see if I can hit that goal, but that's definitely like the top goal for me. Um, as far as like venturing out to like LFA or anything, I don't think I would do, I would, I would do that. I mean, Invicta is the best home I could have right now as far as promotion goes. And 
you know, the only other option would either be UFC or Bellator. Yeah, yeah. So are you signed to a a, a, a multi-fight contract at the moment with Invicta or is it um, like see how this one goes and then go from there? Um, I, I do have a couple of fights lined up for Invicta, yeah. So oh, we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty set there. All right, that's great. That's definitely good to hear. And it must be good for that kind of thought process, right? Yeah, because you've got you know, that security. It, and... Yeah, it's, a, it's good to know that me, that securing that goal um, is possible. It's not, mm. not something that's not doable or I'm you know, trying to be an overachiever. It's something that, you know, that could possibly very well happen. Yeah, no, definitely. And when you look at people like Aaron Blanchfield, Kay Hansen, right, they burst in, you know, I think they were amateurs when they debuted for Invicta. And look at them now, right? Not, it wasn't that many fights before they then got to the upper echelons of those divisions. So I think, you know, as a goal, you could definitely be fighting for the, um, for the belt because I don't think rankings always play into these things, right? If you had that dazzling performance, that can get you to places where just a, you know, decision win might not. Right, right. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to take it fight by fight, but, like, you know, it's something to, you know, keep me motivated and, you know, to keep me trying to do the best that I can in each fight, you know, not try to just, you know, do an okay fight and let it go to the decision and win by decision. No, I always want to try and do the absolute best that I can and, you know, make my mark in this promotion. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Now, when you're in the, so you've won the first two rounds clearly, right? So you're in the third round, opponent's tough, but you think she's getting tired and there could be a possibility of a finish, but you're winning the round right do you take that victory or do you uh, push um it's it's honestly whatever my coach calls in the corner you know one of my teammates say I'm like playing a video game whatever they say I do so if my coaches say hey Ari like throw this and and let's see where this goes and if I see that she's hurt at that point then yeah you know you know I really really trust my cornerman a lot you know so if they see that 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 the you know the the finish is there I'm definitely gonna take it and you know we have words you know that we follow that you know that I'll know when it, it's the time to to finish it or, or to yeah. just keep playing it safe oh nice and how is that trust built right <laughs> that that bond because you always see that there's some fighters who have that bond with the corner right mm -hmm. How is that, yeah, how is that established? Is it just through the training or is it like, you know, hanging out outside of the gym? Like, how do you build that, that bond where they know what you're thinking? They can direct you, you know, just by seeing you do a certain body movement or, you know, say a certain thing within a fight. Um, I would honestly say it goes back to the story I told you about Connecticut, you know, um, my coach saw something in me to keep going, you know, and I think at that point, you know, I really started to, to trust coach Alec a lot. And when it came down to seeing what happened in that fight, we fixed the mistakes and that's when he literally came up with a whole, you know, system around, you know, certain fighters. And he was like, this fighter does this like, kind of like you do. So this is what we're going to do and we're going to make it a lot better. And, you know, we have all these, you know, different types of, you know, moves and stuff like that, that, you know, that only him and I know and a couple mm. of other of our teammates. So it goes to show that he took time out of his life to break down my fighting style and um, make me into the fighter that I am today, you know, so I feel like that was already trustworthy as it is. Um, and, you know, as we, you know, continue to train together and stuff like that, little things are developed to make me better. And, um, you know, each training session, there's more trust, you know, each time, you know, one of us is having a bad day and they reach out, you know, there's, there's trust there, you know, like I, 
I trust, I definitely trust no matter what this guy calls in my fight that we're going to get the job done. Um, Coach Alec, fun story, actually just fought Saturday for combat night. He got a second round rear naked choke. Okay. Nice. That Tuesday before he fought, he held seven five minute rounds for me while he's cutting weight. That right there <laughs> proves to me that I can trust this guy. If he's willing to be almost. Oh, and no. holding mitts for me so I can get my work in. Oh. Wow. Oh, yeah. oh, God damn it. I think. Um... Mm -hmm.